So when you hear the word Python, everyone has one of two images immediately in their heads. So if you are a person who likes reptiles, keeps them, knows a little bit about them, the first image you immediately think of is cute little pupper face, I'm a boop the snoop, boop. Or if you don't know too much about them, you're afraid of them or just don't like them for some reason, you immediately think of giant man-eating monster taking over the Everglades, which we're not gonna talk about that in this video. But there are a lot of other python species out there other than just little pupper boop snoot here and giant Burmese pythons. And this video I'm going to talk about five species of pythons that you may not know about. So I don't actually have any of them to show you in person. That's why I have Kalamazoo here, one of our little animal ambassadors and or snake video presentation animals, I guess you could say. We'll stick with animal ambassadors. That sounds better, right? Um, so I don't, I can't always do videos just about the animals that I have here. So I do a whole lot of research on some animals. So I learn with you guys and then we're going to present them together for you. So that way everyone learns in general. So that being said, five different Python species that you not, may not know about. So when we think of Python, they're the typically large or heavy bodied non-venomous constrictor species of snakes. They're usually found around, you know, a little bit north or south of the equator, mostly in the old world, i.e. the Eastern Hemisphere, in Africa, Australia, Southeast Asia, and kind of like the Indo-Pacific Island area. So that's where all of these ones are gonna be found. And to start this off with, this one is one that I actually have been, out of this whole list, the only one that I've actually worked with or I guess you could say handled, because like I said, I don't have any of them, and that is the Maclots Python. So in the different genuses of pythons, you know, so there's ball pythons, it's Python Regis, so the genus is Python. This genus is Liasis, and Liasis is a really cool genus of snake that typically have a little bit of kind of a bad rap, where they're, you know, kind of strikey, not very nice, not very handleable, very high prey drive. And the one that I worked with was a little cage defensive, but as soon as it came out, she was just fine. Um, and that's kind of the case for a lot of different species of reptiles in general. Like Sev, we put her, Severus, our big just Guyana boa, we put her in a very large six foot uh, vision cage. And now she really doesn't like to come out, but as soon as she come out, puppy dog tame. So we'll not give the Liasis that hard of a time. So the Maclots Python are kind of a cool species of Python. They're a good size, six to nine feet. So, you know, not like a Burmese python or anything like that, but significantly larger than like a ball python here. They're not as heavy bodied because they're not as fossorial or terrestrial. They do like to climb. They can be arboreal, nothing like a green tree or even a carpet, but they will be found up in like kind of sturdier branches, scrubs and trees and things like that. Um, they're found kind of scattered throughout this whole kind of wider range. And that's because there are three separate subspecies, and one of which is another snake on this list. Um, they're found, you know, on Timor, Papua New Guinea, different islands of Indonesia, and even kind of the northeastern coastline of mainland Australia as well. Um, they're a really cool snake. They have this different kind of coloration to them. Some people might think they're, you know, ugly or whatever it is, and that's just because they don't realize how iridescent they are. So they're this kind of dark olive green brown to almost black color along the top with high, high iridescence. I mean, they're one of the snakes that when you, you know, they say like, oh, it's one of the rainbow snakes on Instagram and Pinterest and stuff. Um, you know, it's usually the D'Alberts Python, but they're one of the ones that are very, very high iridescent. And then their undersides... So like with this, so with like Kalamazoo here, where it's that kind of white there, it's that, only it's very striking because it's that dark, dark coloration. And then underneath is that kind of creamy yellow to almost white coloration. Um, they're just a really cool snake that you don't see too, too often, but I think kind of these more odd species are gonna start to come back a little bit. They really dwindled away for a while in the 2000s because, you know, shh, it's okay, I still love you. Um, but you know, they've dwindled away in popularity, but they are starting to come back. So the next one on this list is a kind of cool little Python. And I say little, they have a decent size to them, you know, that five and a half to six foot range. And that is the Bismarck ring Python. So 
They have the name for a very obvious reason, and that is that specifically with juveniles, this striking ringed bright orange to reddish orange and black rings across their entire body. And they look really cool. They're very do they're fairly docile, specifically for a lot of the snakes on this list, and they're fairly well handleable. They're just not super, super popular. They're and even then they they're just not widely available. They never got too too much you know, like steam building behind them before these guys showed up on the scene. So they never had a very large population here in the United States. And they're still a really cool animal to work with. Several people are working with them here in the United States. I don't know how many are successfully breeding them on a even biannual level, but they're still really cool. Um, that being said, the name Ring Python, it kind of changes as they become an adult. So like a lot of other animals, they kind of dull out as they get older, ball pythons. Um, you know, they have that bright orange banding. As they get older, it kind of fades to this kind of darker brown to almost kind of a straight uniform colored bodied animal where it's the all that entire like kind of dark brown almost black bodied animal as an adult they're still a really cool little species and i think it'd be really fun to work with so the next one on this list as i mentioned before is a subspecies of the maclots python or the liasis maclotus um, these guys are the savu python so these guys are a separate subspecies so kind of like with bull snakes and gopher snakes, the actual species is Pituophus catenifer, and then the individual subspecies are catenifer catenifer, catenifer sei, the bull snake, and then all the other ones like that. They're all different subspecies of the same one. But with the Savu pythons, they're one of the three subspecies that is most definitely distinguishable physically, the enough to where it for sure is a defined subspecies. These guys are consistently smaller and a few other physical characteristics, which definitely, you know, kind of defines them as separate from the regular Maclots. So the Maclots, you know, they're the six to nine foot-ish range animal. The Savu pythons, they're more like four, four and a half to six, you know, with the females being larger with pretty much every python species. Um, so a lot smaller. They're also, their attitudes are a little bit kind of, a little of uh, their attitudes are a little bit less kind of fiery. They still have a really great prey drive, but not usually as, whoa, you know, kind of a deal when you're messing with those guys. They also have this really cool feature in that there are these strikingly bright white eyes. And that's actually one of the names for them is white eyed python. We've all heard of the white lips, the D Alberts. But these guys are the white-eyed python for a very obvious reason. And similarly to the Bismarck ring python, when these guys are born, they can be a very bright orange. And as they get older, they turn darker. That's where they get the very kind of similar coloration to the maclots, that darker dorsal color to the white underbelly, still with a high amount of iridescence. But these guys also have a tendency to have a lot of kind of freckling and splotching that kind of like break up that defining difference in pigmentation. And not exactly sure why that is, but they're still really cool. But that's the Savu Python, still Liasis, and that's another genus of snake that I think would be really cool to work with. But I'm kind of running out of room in downstairs in our snake room, so... If I'm going to decide to go for one of those, I'm going to have to really commit to that because some of them can get pretty big like the Maclots or the Water Pythons um, that are also a really cool snake species. But I think more people have heard of Water Pythons than the Maclots or Savus. So the next one on this list might be my favorite of the five, and that's the Timor Python. So depending on what, you know, biology journal taxonomy paper that you're reading, and also depending on when it was written, Timor pythons have been a lot of different species or subspecies of snakes. So at one point they were considered a subspecies of scrub python or amethystine python. At one point they were considered morelia. At one point they were considered reticulated pythons. Now they're essentially kind of, con as a bit of a consensus, they're almost like a dwarf species of reticulated python. Their actual Latin name is Malipython uh, Timorensis. So Timor, that's the island where they're typically found. They're found on a lot of other islands, kind of in that Indonesian area. Um, Papua New Guinea, it's, they're all kind of like this big kind of cluster of islands that make up Papua New Guinea, um, the northern parts of Australia, and Indonesia. It's just a lot of different islands. 
but Timor is the one where they're kind of really well known for. And they're this really cool python. They do achieve a decent length, about seven-ish feet, but they're very thin-bodied, very slender snakes, and pretty arboreal. So a lot of people think that like retics, they're not very arboreal. They definitely are. Even like the large, mature-bodied animals, you'll find them in cave systems crawling up the sides quite a few feet up in the air. Um, and Timors obviously don't get that big. They're still fairly arboreal. You'll find them in trees quite often. And they're this really cool animal where you kind of get like the retic shape and even a little bit of the attitude where they can be a little bit, you know, cage dodgy or defensive. But they have this really beautiful pattern that, you know, like the reticulated pythons, they were named that for like a reticulated, you know, oriental rug. The Timors have that too. It's a different pattern entirely than the retics, but it's a still really cool kind of mottled, beautiful pattern that doesn't have like crazy like differences in coloration. It's that kind of, you know, olive green, brown, yellow, but just the pattern of it is so cool. And I would love to be able to work with that species specifically out of all these ones, but their price tag is a little high right now because, you know, they're not worked with a whole lot they used to be around like two three hundred bucks back in the day you know at like a tinley show in the early 2000s but since you know the rarity's really gone up you don't see too many people working with them i know like ryan mcveigh again is working with them and i think nj is working with them too but not 100 percent sure they're still importing i believe and i know there are some captive animals around but if you know anybody who has a pair that they're uh, thinking about giving away let me know down in the comments so this last snake on the list is a really interesting one. So this one might, and also I will do my best not to fumble over these names. I am so bad about that. Um, but these guys might be one of the rarest snakes in the world, specifically pythons. Um, at least, yeah, one of the rarest pythons. They used to think it was the rough scale, but you know, since they kind of discovered them a little bit and we've actually got some decent populations established here in the States, even people here in Colorado working with them, they're a very hardy animal. And I, at some point, will get a hold of some. Don't you guys worry. Um, but this snake is the Olimpelli python. So some of the old school guys out there might know a little bit about this, is that this is kind of an unusual animal for a number of reasons. Number one is it's big. Like, I mean, they frequently achieve 12 to 14 feet, and there's a record of one achieving over 16 um, in captivity at one point, but they don't know how many there are. We really don't know that much about them, and that is because they're only found in one little area of the Northern Territory in Australia, and even then, it's very hard to get to. They're only found in one small area in rocky sandstone outcroppings, and it's very hard to get to. It's very isolated, and it's hard to do research in areas like that, in general, if any of you have watched like the Dave Kaufman videos where he's an Australian and you saw the flies and like how crazy it was out there, it's very difficult to do research on population on, on populations of individual animals out there, even for an animal as large as a 12, 15 foot long snake. It's crazy. We don't know that much about them, but there are a few things we do know which make them really, really cool. So number one is, like I said, they're very, very large snakes. They're also fairly mellow snakes. Um, they've been classified as Morellii. They've been classified as a lot of other, a lot of other different ones. Their actual Latin name right now is, and I apologize if I get this wrong because I'm really bad at Latin names, uh, Nawarin Oempelii. So the name Nawarin, and I'm probably mispronouncing that, and I do apologize, is actually one of the Aboriginal words for that specific python. And that's what we decided to name its monolithic or the only one of that genus, the Oompelli python. So there's at least a little bit of homage to aboriginals who actually live with this animal for centuries. Another one is that these guys can change color. And as I'm doing more research for these videos and also just kind of for my own benefit, I'm learning that not only do chameleons change color and a lot of other reptiles, uh, a lot of snakes can do it too. And we'll talk about those in future videos. But these guys have the ability to change their coloration from darker to lighter, just kind of depending on the day they have found. Usually darker during the day and lighter at night. It may have something to do with like UVB absorption. We're not 100% sure, but that's something they can absolutely do. 
The other thing that's also really cool about this absolutely insane python that no one's heard of is their eggs are huge. So I've talked before in other videos about Louisiana pine snakes and their eggs are very large compared to their body size. And they usually have pretty small clutches. Owen Pelly's, I didn't have, a, I couldn't find a whole lot of information about clutch size, but their eggs are huge. So we're talking 100 to 110 millimeters long, which is very big. And then by 60 wide, which is, I think about a third larger than like the same size scrub python would give. So absolutely insane. Hopefully you enjoyed five different python species that you've probably never heard of. And it was really interesting because I've heard of all these before, but I didn't know too, too many details specifically about the Olimpelli, about a changing color and all these other crazy things. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. I certainly got to enjoy learning about them and then sharing with you. And hopefully that enough of you can actually share and enjoy and learn from this video as well. Um, if you have any questions, comments, let me know down below. Um, email me at all the different social media outlets and things like that. Um, let me know if you like video like this about kind of different odd species and things like that. I know that some people really like the top five list, which I kind of feel is a little bit poaching ideas from other um, content creators on YouTube where that's kind of their shtick. So I try to avoid doing too many of those or at least of the same subject. Um, but let me know if you really like this one. Like I could do one about boas. There's a lot of boa species out there that aren't just a dumerals, a boa imperator, or even like uh, an emerald tree bow. There's a lot out there that I could talk about if that's something that you guys would want to see. Um, please let me know any constructive criticism or anything like that. Let me know down in the comments. If you're interested in Jay-Z's Reptiles merch, um, check out our podcast, Keep Calm, It's Just a Snake podcast. And as always, please, 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 if you can, if you love reptiles, if you have someone in your life who loves reptiles, check out and think about supporting US ARC. That's the US Association of Reptile Keepers. They are the only association, the only group fighting for our rights to keep these reptiles here in the States. And right now we are under a lot of pressure, under a lot of threats right now from us not being able to keep really any of them federally, period. It's crazy right now for us. So if you think, if you think, you know, you'll be able to build, to support them, if you have someone in your life that you know that you would love them or just the, be, the ability to continue learning about them other than just on YouTube or on videos or on nature documentaries from the 90s, please think about checking out US Arc. I'll put the link down in the description of this video as well as all of my other videos. Henceforth, and I'll probably go back and actually add them to a lot of the other ones as well. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hope you're having a great day and we'll check you next time.